Hello again. So, Joe Biden is in the White House, and Donald Trump is not. And uh, as far as my, as my blog goes, um, it really wasn't. A Trump follower, but I would rather he would had had one. But uh, there was good and bad to either side, so I was trying to weigh the evils to see which one was uh, best. Joe has already got uh, Caesar Ch Ch Chavez or whatever his name is. I don't even. I'm not much for speaking Spanish names. Chavez. Um, or whatever his name is. I don't know what his name is. Um, he's got a portrait of him or something in his office. He took the military flags down. But he's a commander in chief. So um, he's lowering our defenses, it seems like. That's his goal. Or that's just something he's not recognizing. And uh, so the commander-in-chief part, he's, he's twisted about. We don't know if he really stole the election because it, it was so, so shady. It's so strange how, like, you know, Trump's winning. I look every day. I was watching every day to see what's going on. Trump was winning. The Senate, they were winning. Um, even took seven Republican seats in the Congress. All the seats weren't up or probably would have took the whole, the whole House. Um, so obviously there's some, something strange going on. Um, but like a week later, then Biden wins. Um, I don't know about all the computer stuff. I mean, people ranting and raving and, uh, both sides saying, no, it's good. Forget about it. And I seen somebody post in Germany and Trump had won there by a landslide, like way, a whole lot. And they were seeing that on TV. And um, I don't know. I think, uh, I think would have been bad if Trump had won and it would, it's really bad that Biden won. So basically right now our elections are bad. And um, that can happen, I guess. I mean, I've never known of a good president. I, Ronald Reagan was a scoundrel to me. I, I don't know. And uh, uh, I didn't, I was too young to know much about Carter, so I didn't worry about it. I mean, people come up with all kinds of things to say about every politician, but it's a bad world to be ruling over. So yeah, I don't know. We had a Cold War. And you never know what to think, you know, and there's no Cold War now, but people got the government so socialist that um, might as well be, you know, some kind of uncivil rest here. <clears throat> Obviously, people renounce their allegiance with the, the, the Republic, which, uh, you know, I mean, the whole, not every, but, but the flag burner people, you know. Um, they definitely renounce their allegiance with the Republic for which it stands, which is the only allegiance we as a c c uh, civilians ever said. Now, I was in the military and um, I said a little bit more. Um, I had a degree and signed paperwork about it, you know, so it was a little more official. Um, 
So everything which we were sworn in to defend Biden is against and urban people. Even I was a private invest investigator. I was trained as a private investigator. And so all your civil defense as a, a citizen, your your civil rights to do, to descend and protect yourself and your loved ones, your property. And Biden seems against that, and all the people who voted for him. Um, I can't believe that they're against their own rights, just ours, just American people who are uh, not their kind. So, uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm all for people having uh, freedom. That's, that's it. And, um, democracy is a, a Greek Roman thing. And, In a country like this, the only free country in the world, the only real free country, or was until we had people coming here who were from socialist South America and their kids would be born and they had you no, know, they didn't like white people in their families. It's been really hard. Um, I understand that whatever you hold against someone can be held against you, right? Or will be. I have to look it up exact words again. Um, so definitely holding it against somebody, their race, is uh, probably not uh, a real biblical principle. Um, but it's not about like this just that they're this race or that race. It's <laughs> their families' beliefs, their way they live, where they're, the countries that they, they keep bringing their families here and having not really been who established the country. I mean, every town you go to, every town, there are just a few people who established even the moral law there. You know, there's like some judge who got that honor. And um, he's like probably appointed by um, probably appointed by some church community to be the judge, you know. Don't, didn't, they didn't have to be lawyers. That's, it's not in the law. Um just a man of God who's respected or, you know, somebody considered to have a, you know, good judgment. Um, law abiding person. But that's all, that's how it happened. And, and a lot of them, some guy had some land, donated it, or maybe a group of people, some farmers or something, got together, bought some uh, some land, and then they donated it to become a city. You know, um, they worked together to get the, the mills started, the flour mills, and whatever, <clears throat> so they get the store started, so they get things down the, the rivers and whatever they needed to, or on the wagon trails, so, you know, the roads built so they can get their crops to someone, the railroad started coming. They wanted to get that railroad through their town so they can get their crops sold and whatever else they want to sell and ship. And we built things from the woods. And we're going through a lot because of uh, Indians having been left out of the institution because they had a different institution if they had one, right? And we, um, whatever kind of institution it was, it didn't have the same moral laws like God's laws. And, um, you know, even the white countries, the European countries, 
um, the war against one another's institutions, even some place, just castle to castle, right? Fortress to fortress. Um, and then one white person, like the Scandinavians, they'd war tribe for tribe, and one tribe loses, they become slaves to the other tribe. And um, that's just the way that went. So they come up with a lot, you know, and accuse people a lot. But really, I mean, America, one of the virtues of America, back then, Cromwell, when, when America was being established in like 1630 area uh, timeline, Cromwell had become powerful, right? And I think the Irish kings or somebody funded him and helped him defeat England. Um, so he he killed the English king and um, became Lord Protector. And uh, one of the things was is he was a Puritan, and one of the things Puritans believed in was the moral law, right? And um, Catholics, they say from history things that I read. I don't know. I wasn't there. But we're living like really immoral people, like pedophiles, you know, like we see now, uh, like Nancy Pelosi and George Biden and all these people, you know, who are Catholics, politicians. They're they're just extreme hypocrite, right? And uh, but you know, that's just modern day is not comparable. I wasn't there. We just. Something was going on where the Protestants wanted uh, the Puritan, that moral law, legality, right, fundamental principles of morality, everything, you know. And um, so they got really, really serious about it. And when they came to power, they were killing Catholics in public, according to history. Um get rid of them for being too immoral and um, which is just pretty unbiblical um, it says he who cast the first stone you know kind of thing but and this is without a trial I don't know maybe they had trials and then just put them on public trials real quick lynchings mobs of people like the Ku Klux Klan or something, you know. I mean, it, it, I can't fathom. I wasn't there. But I, I'm kind of a history buff. I don't have a history major. So, you know, if it's not exact, what I what I say is not, not intentional, but um, it's just probably something I picked off off, off of the... <laughs> The wrong documentary or something I was watching. I don't know. But I did do some Yale history classes online. Um, YouTube, open courses, you, lectures. And um, watched a lot of documentaries and read a lot of articles, history. And um, so I'm trying to figure out myself, you know. I know that moral law was a real big thing. And uh, so they're real strict in America about moral law. Back then, Puritans were who were establishing the country. We had, so the Dutch, Puritans, Protestant, wanted to come over here before the English, or I put a request to come in, but the Dutch wouldn't let them come over. <laughs> and then um, the first people actually came over from England were knights almost every one of them was a knight and they were the only people allowed to come over i might just imagine why so they these adventurer guys that were knighted right come over and then there were some rich merchants on the ships too from who were dutch because the dutch came over to set up too you know and um so i know i know somebody in my family or somebody with the same last name as me um who was related 
<clears throat> there was three investors in the New Netherlands trading company, Elkins. And there was 50 families total, 50 uh, investors in the New Netherlands trading company, which put a request in to come here with a uh, Dutch Protestant congregation, hired them to take them to the new, new America, right? New land. But they couldn't. The Dutch wouldn't let them come. They only wanted uh, Dutch traders or merchants to allow. So then somebody, one of those people, one of those Elkins had 75 pounds of silver and they let him on the ship, right? That the knights were on. He was, they were the only person that wasn't a knight was an Elkins with merchant on one ship. I don't know about the others. And um, then they got a request with the ship they own approved through England to come over here. And then they traded for quite a while. And well, I don't know exact amount, you know, not like super long time, but it was so many years. And then um, the Dutch finally caught him going up a river, the Dutch military and decided since they were from the Netherlands, even with an English charter, they're not gonna let them go up the river because they're holding that for the Dutch merchants who had a charter from the Dutch. And they got pissed. And because they had a load to take some Indians they'd already arranged, had some trading, done trading with before. So they went up the river anyway and got back. The Dutch took their ship and commandeered it and sent them off back home out with a $5,000 fine. And then they decided to leave the Netherlands and move to London. And then they moved from London eventually, or, or the son of that person moved to the captain of that ship moved to uh, America around the time of Cromwell. And uh, so that's kind of an example of what was going on other than, you know, like Dutch were financing the revolution and stuff with ships and uh, munitions and weapons. And um, the Irish doing a lot of the fighting. And, um, but the moral law was so strict, masturbation was, uh, there was a death penalty for masturbation in the first laws in America. Those were the American laws. And I, I, I'm going to try and find uh, all the laws, the moral laws, you know, it's common law basically, but I did a paralegal course, but, um, they were stricter than what we know as common law and sodomy was like really serious offense. And um, there's a death penalty for sodomy, and masturbation was c included. <laughs> but I mean, nowadays everybody would be killed. I mean, because we had porn and we had the TV and all that stuff, and people were whacked. And um, back then, that was not tolerated. It wasn't uh, something. I mean, who knows? Um, but you know, the clothes girls dressed like really they had their bonnets on or whatever they had covered heads kind of like almost not co super comparable to muslim but they had their bonnets they had to have covered heads and they had covered skin no skirts like that dresses were had to be long and um <clears throat> so maybe you know uh, that was just expected you know you're gonna get so anyway put you on trial for masturbation and kill you or something, shoot you in the backyard. I don't know. Hang you. That's America. That's how strict it was. There was plagues. can not really imagine. It doesn't help. Like, you know, seeing all the videos and stuff, that everything come up with it. I think that messes with, it just makes it harder and kind of gives people a distorted view. Um, this imaginary America. And the, everything they could imagine out and try to reenact, it doesn't really help, you know. I don't think they really can, you know, because they'd have to pretend. Because they, they take this fact, they leave that fact out, and they just leave the fact, period, you know. Anything bad they dig up, it, um, it just, it's like trying to, you know, you can find bad in anything. There was bad. You know, every person that's digging something that's really bad, that person can find out is how their ancestors, you know, or trespassing the whole universe and, and really, you know, 
undeserving of all things, you know. I mean, I don't know. You could just anybody that's trying to do it's it, it, it doesn't help to dig up evil. And uh, the moral law was being established, law and order. I mean, that boom. That's I think before they allowed anybody to come over to the United States. Knights were up there warring people. They weren't really, but they had governors sent over, planned it. I think they had to have it planned out how they had these laws gov to establish laws and order. You know, there had to be order. And um, ministers, I think, uh, had a lot to do with some of the stuff in the colonies. But uh, it seemed like the monarchs, it was aristocracy. So, I mean, because there was like, in New England, there was a lot of stuff going on there where they Puritans overthrew the the Parliament, and because um, some guy came over who was governor and he took their church building and moved in. This is back the time of like Cotton Mather, who was the guy who named uh, Yale University and was the youngest person to attend Harvard. He's like twelve years old. He attended Harvard. And um, had a stuttering problem, wrote a whole bunch of books about religion. And uh, Cotton Mathers and um, or Mather, I can't, I don't know, is it Mather or Mathers? And uh, so. Anyways, all those people, there was 10 ministers, they went over to England and said, hey, this guy took our church building because he didn't, you know, you got to get him out. What are we going to, you know, we want him out now. And then um, they wouldn't do anything, so they came back and decided to just, they're going to start a war. They're going to revolt. Really, over this church building, and this governor lived in their church building. They got the whole, whole colony of New England was overthrown by the militias. Um, pissed off because some guy was living in their church and um, like these people that revolted about the election you know and um, so you know that's just the way Christian American are the, you know I mean people trying this new wave this new age thing like oh let's all all this gone um, it's, the moral law will never go away and it was Christianity that's all about Christianity uh, you know and um, church established all the institutions period you know every city everything was all church the hospitals the colleges Harvard Yale all the colleges through all the states um, other than the Greek Roman which they chose, which people got real serious about after the World War. And um, even before it, they were getting so serious about it. And uh, see, back, they were get, they're getting so Greek. They were getting so Greek. And um, right before Hitler, right? It's so real strange how, like, uh, the Olympics. The Olympics were banned since like the year 300 and over a thousand years. And then the late 1890s, like early, or early 1890s or whatever, um, that's the, the, the Olympics came back, with, you know. So whatever that was, what, what all the democracy stuff going on in the industrial age, uh, Americans were getting wealthy and the rich people. We're bringing this Greek thing. They're 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 very Greek and try to get this knowledge from Egypt, and then they started a, a thing in, in, in Yale. Um, the observatory at Yale. They had a guy who's not Elkins like I am, but Elkin without the S. Um, same last name meaning, but I don't know. I guess maybe uh, have been an ancestor hundreds of thousand years ago, whatever. But he, uh, Elkin, 
was the dean of the observatory at Yale. But what he went over to Egypt and got all their scrolls and all their stuff about he came over with that knowledge and started the observatory at Yale. And then um so that was about the same time they they got this um late eighteen hundreds when they got this stuff going with uh getting the Olympics back again. So they were trying all this old society stuff, you know, get and um so they wanted to re just everything to be about democracy, not even about freedom eventually. It was getting really bad, you know, like they're doing now. Um, back then, the late 1800s was also when socialism was coming out. And uh, we had problems with socialism starting. And then uh, they didn't even get them or, until after the World War, the Cold War started. They didn't arrest them and get rid of that. And um, so that's all taken place. And so what is this very Greek, very Roman, very immature, really? Um, well, you know, it's just a lot of people uh, trying to make America something more Greek, like Greece and Rome, than like America. And um, I don't know, I, I couldn't be them. To want to know, and, and I hear people, the philosophers, you know, a political, uh, everything's just about philosophy to them, politics, everything, you know. And uh, they're trying to be like Greek, right? Very Greek and very Roman. And um, America's just not Greek or Roman that much, you know. Um, the institution was about church, Puritans, establishment, and um, whatever Freemasonry was in the beginning, I don't think it is what it is now, I wouldn't know, but that was pretty much made up. And, and they say it goes back, and I've read books, and the Book of Wisdom explains how, you know, it's just all made up stuff, all that stuff. They came up with rituals way back in the land of Canaan in Egypt, you know, came up with false gods, it made insects gods. And that's what they're finding. They, oh, these reptilian, yeah, that, read the Bible. It says they were doing that or making gods out of their reptiles and, and insects. And they got punished and God plagued them with reptiles and insects, you know. And um, it's all fake stuff. I, it's just um, everything in Egypt. Them, even the sex stuff we're going with now, they found it in the Egyptian scrolls, right? And... Um, like Hindu stuff, and they, they found these ancient texts. I mean, the, the, the Jesuits used to, they were trying to stop the, the blacks and teach them in their colonies and stuff over in Africa not to do the sex acts they were doing because it was like really beastly and just ungodless ungod stuff. And that's what you see in porn nowadays. I'm pretty sure they probably got it from the Egyptian scrolls, African and Hindu, you know. Middle Eastern stuff um, wasn't in Europe side. I don't think you know. I mean, pretty, pretty plain. That's what they were doing. That's their plans. You think it's clever? I think it's really stupid to go through society's uh, perversion. But. That's not America. America was established and they had to figure out what the, what's just it's trial and error. There was only so many people when they established it. They obviously didn't establish for people who would break those the strict laws they had. I mean, they just, it was like, you know, do or die. You know, they put a death penalty on things there, like masturbation. Um, So we're living and learning, and uh, I think they are trying to make us learn things that really have no value to humanity. And religious immaturity is bad, and um, we got a lot of that here in the United States more than every other country, other than maybe South America's. And um, 
Some, well, actually, Catholic, Catholicism is not the greatest example of any kind of religion. Uh, it's it's been lorded over and turned into like an empire, and uh, it totally contradicts everything to the doctrine. And then we have make believe people, make people making things up, statues, worshiping statues. That's very immature. Look at them, right? And uh, Religious doctrine that they just taught. Or, uh, we, as as the, the, the brought the divine doctrine of Christ, the, the prophets of God. and So, anyways, there's a lot of stuff. And my blog is about sustainability. And uh, I've had just learn. Uh, it's really not normal, but you know, I learned from politics, um, just living and studying from what I believe and experienced uh, in security and stuff. You know, I, I was a private investigator, like I said, and then I was living in a capital city when I did that. And um, of California, one of our major populated places it was so ultra liberal. I wasn't a liberal. And uh I had to learn. I've studied the laws. I've read the federal codes from charter to health and health and welfare. All the way the whole took me four years. Boring as thing. I fell asleep the first couple pages and Wake back up. And I, I'm gonna try it again. I keep doing it. And the, that the first book, it was really hard to stay awake reading a few pages, but it was so boring. But then I got used to it, and actually was like really just motivated me. I thought we're gonna know this stuff, you know. And it was kind of cool, you know, just reading because you would never know. You just see this book, even though I don't know. I just read the codes. So I know what the codes are. I didn't. I don't know if I really memorized them. You can't just read, but I remember them pretty well. Um, then I read, uh, a lot of city core ordinances, wherever I was at in the state codes of Utah, California, and Oregon. And, um, I, I didn't get through all the state codes because there were so many and you can just look them up when you need to, but I read quite a few and, um, the city ordinances I read all the way through. I, they're not. It's like one big book, you know, and then um, Sacramento, Albany, Corvallis, Bellingham, Washington, Hollywood, Utah. But I, uh, I read some like old penal codes of Ireland and Swedish penal codes and <clears throat> I don't know. I just read laws and, and constitution. I read books like D. Tocqueville's book on democracy and I just read things, whatever I could find. And then um, I did a, you know, I read like a book on King Alfred. And, uh, I read a book on criminology death penalty, stuff like that. I read books on, uh, I read the government study guides. I read a lot of study guides, you know, the 911 operator, policeman, corrections officer, um, FBI. Well, no, I didn't read the FBI. It was a secret agent one, and it was a uh, border patrol. I read that one. I read the space shuttle study exam guide for a person that's going to be an astronaut has to be. And I read uh, like Parks and Rec one, and, and I read uh, electrician. Then I read uh, government counselors. I can't remember. I think that was it. And I read some some government study guides. And then I read uh, 
Um, then I did a paralegal course. And then I did a private investigator or security investigator course. And uh, then I did some class and eventually I did it. I, I worked in uh, petitioning in Los Angeles, California on initiatives for laws and campaigns. And that's when I started, you know, kind of getting a little few some ideas about politics more of my own. And um, it's got me, I was in my 30s. And I was getting, starting to study sustainability. I studied a lot of it. That's why I'm doing this blog. I read books on uh, sustainable forestry, and, but you know, I read books on a lot, a lot of books on architectural, sustainable architecture. I read books on uh, other, you know, things that had to do with sustainability, um, sustainable culture, stuff like that. And then I took a class on sustainable science at uh, Lane Community College, in Eugene, Oregon. And I took a political science class. And then um, and I've done four Harvard government, US government classes. And I have a lot of ideas about sustainability now. And um, just about a lot of business, how uh, instead of using socialism, we could use private sector and it actually is a lot better and a lot safer to our freedom to use the private sector and uh, for a lot of things to keep that check the, the more as uh, about the people and not about the institution, the big, like this huge institution, which I know that every people went to college and they get in their PhDs, they're like, man, you know, a lot of people were pretty angry. They studied law and couldn't find a good job. A lot of people studied psychology, you know, and a lot of people studied to be artists and or actors and scientists or study the liberal arts, right? And um, they they had to use grants, start institutions, stuff. Not bad. Not with as many people as there are in society, and you know. Just a bunch of the business people only wanting things about greed, but or their profit, you know. But too big of a government's too big of a government, right? And uh, that's not what America's about. If you read what George Washington was working on, you know, people don't believe that he knew anything, but he was one of the the leaders, right? And, but he didn't want a big government is because he was thinking about freedom, independence. That, he was freeing himself from a government. He knew that he had been an officer. He really didn't want to be like some kind of emperor of the world or something like, you know, people's because of all this stuff America has been doing after the cold war Marshall plan and all that became big empire. But, uh, Yeah, there's a, a lot we can do, even politically. Um, I know Donald Trump's got this plan for the, the Patriot Party. How's that going to go over? Not everybody's a patriot. You know, I, I know I'm, a, I'm an early American. I can't, I'm not going to become somebody who's not. And, and my family was like drafted the state constitution along with some other people, you know, and started the trade industry from this grassland, right? And um, where I live, you know, the state of Oregon, they burnt the fields first road that goes to Eastern Oregon. They had the flour mill was theirs. <clears throat> they get in the farmer's crops so they can earn money. They had the store, all that stuff. And there, there was a few other people in other areas and they went together and they built the state capital and did this and that, drafted the constitution, built the colleges in their areas. And, you know, my family took part in that too, in their area where they live. <clears throat> 
And uh, I know people don't have that heritage. It's not their ancestry. It's not their, you know, they don't, it doesn't have to do with them, their family, though. Well, heritage of the country that way. And, um, you know, some of my fought in the revolution. I don't know how many people fought in the revolution or war in my family. I'd have to look. I know at least one. And, 